Hi, this is Dr. Jojo Kotur, respiratory dentist and endodontist from India. Today, we will be learning about the role of wedge in creating predictable contacts and contour. So, let's start with the purpose of the wedge. The primary purpose of the wedge is to prevent the overhang margins at the proximal area. Have a look into this particular x ray. You can see an overhang restoration towards the mesial aspect of first molar. And a primary reason for this particular phenomena is the improper use of a wedge. Accordingly, the main objective of using a wedge is to create a beautiful adaptation between the matrix band and the cavo surface margin of the gingival seat. So the question is, how will you select the proper wedge? For that, first we need to identify the size and shape of buccal and lingual embrasure by looking from the occlusal aspect. Now let's consider tooth number 1, 5 and 1, 6 and we are going to restore this particular area. As suggested, first we need to identify the buccal and lingual embrasure. Now I am going to show an exaggerated version of these two embrasure and you can appreciate that the palatal embrasure is larger than the buccal embrasure. This is of clinical significance and you will be understanding it later. So generally on an ideal dentition palatal embrasures are generally wider than buccal embrasure. Hence the primary objective of knowing the size of buccal lingual embrasure is to select the wedge in the proper width. Next, we need to identify the size and shape of gingival embrasure. Now this actually determines the height of the wedge that we are selecting. And how will you do that? It's very simple. Take an IOPA preferably a bitwin radiograph. Have a look into this particular bitwin radiograph. If you want to do a class 2 restoration here, you need to definitely take a smaller wedge. Whereas here, you need a medium size wedge and here, you need a large size wedge or probably you need to place a wedge over the first wedge. So this is how we select the wedge. If you are not able to take a bite wing, an IOPA taken on a paddling technique will also serve the purpose. Have a look here. We need a small wedge here. We need a medium wedge here and obviously we need a large wedge here. Hence the wedge that we select for a particular class 2 restoration should mimic the width and height of the embrasures. Now let's start with the wooden wedge. Now wooden wedge basically comes in two forms. Either it is round or it is triangular. Now here you have a triangular or an anatomic wedge. Now the ideal wooden wedge should be made of maple wood and it's very difficult to get maple wood wedges here. In my knowledge, Polydentia is one company which gives wooden wedges made from maple wood. The, the importance of having the maple wood is that it absorbs the moisture and it swells. Now, other than maple wood, oak wood is also good. It is better in terms of moisture absorption than the maple wood. You also get hemo wedge wherein you place these wedge on a inflamed gingiva. It prevents further bleeding. Now, uh, polydentia also produce macro wedges wherein it's also a type of maple wedge, but it's specifically designed for large embrasures. It is generally said that the wooden wedge should be placed from the largest embrasure and that is the palatal embrasure. And why is that? It is primarily because the width of the wedge towards the tip is smaller than towards the handle. So logically we can assume that 
in order to get predictable matrix band adaptation towards the gingival cavo surface margin, we have to make sure that we place the wooden beds from the largest embrasure. Now let's discuss about the modern wedges or we generally call it as 3D wedge or collapsible or adaptable wedges. Now there are many in the market like diamond wedges from BioClear, the Sabre and Fusion wedges from Garrison, the Wave wedge from Trident, the Flexi wedges from Common Sense, the Paladin Plus wedges from Densefly, the Nitin wedges from uh, IvoClear and many more and there are many more in the market. I had listed out only few. So what is the advantage of using the three-dimensional wedges? The main advantage is obviously it can adapt to the embrasure size. And why it could adapt? It is because it is hollow inside. So it can modify its diameter. Now we already learned that we need to place the wedge from the largest embrasure. Now this is not applicable when we are using the 3D plastic wedge. Now why? Because it will adapt to the embrasure size. So whether you place it from the smallest embrasure or largest embrasure, it just doesn't matter much when we are dealing with three-dimensional plastic wedges. Let's learn about the positioning of wedge in relation to gingival seat. Here I had drawn a class 2 cavity representing gingival seat and the pink color represents the gum. Now where will you place the wedge? After placing the matrix band, the wedge should be placed below the gingival seat so that the wedge will properly adapt the matrix band to the gingival seat. Now the question is what will happen if you go wrong with the positioning of wedge? Consider you placed it above the gingival seat. Now definitely it is going to distort the matrix band. A similar situation is encountered when you go wrong with the height of the wedge also. Here also you can see the matrix band is distorted. Now in order to overcome this problem, a simple solution is cut the wedge towards the top portion so that the height is reduced. So to summarize on wedge selection, three important factor determines ideal wedge selection. What are they? The position. It should be below the gingival seat. The width and height is determined by the width and height of the embrasure. Let's move on to the other applications of wedge irrespective of its type. And one such is papilla compression technique. And what is that? Consider you have a subgingival caries like this. In order to remove this caries, you need to do a cavity preparation extending this much. So obviously, while doing this cavity preparation, there is high chance the burr nicks the gingiva and it will induce bleeding and that will affect the predictability of the bonding protocol that we are doing. So what we need to do is before initiating this cavity preparation you need to pre-wedge the area. So a wedge is placed and this wedge will compress the papilla and keeping the wedge you we do the cavity preparation like this. Now a cavity is being prepared and this wedge will act as the barrier. Now once the preparation is over and you remove the wedge, you have a compressed papilla. This is called a papilla compression technique. Here is a clinical example wherein a pre-wedging was done here in order to protect the gum while doing the tooth preparation towards the gingival seat. The third application of the wedge is to protect the adjacent tooth from injury while doing class 2 cavity preparation. Now these are primarily achieved by fender wedge or wedge guards. 
Fender wedges are produced by Garrison and wedge guards are produced either by Trident or Paladin. There are other similar products also available in the market. Here is a clinical example. I'm going to do a cavity between the premolars. Primarily the cavity is towards the distal aspect of first premolar. So I don't want to ensure the mesial side of the second premolar. So a fender wedge or a wedge card is placed in between before initiating the cavity preparation. We learned that the primary goal of the wedge is to adapt the matrix band properly to the gingival seat. Now there are certain situations wherein you don't get this adaptation with one single wedge. One good example is wherein you have a large buckle and palatal embrasure. Now in these cases we do a wedging technique called double wedging. Here what we do is you place a wedge from the buccal aspect and also from the palatal aspect. In certain other clinical scenarios wherein you have a very shallow proximal box with gingival recession, we have to do a technique called piggyback wedging. Now what is that? You place a large wedge first and you place a smaller wedge on top of the larger one. That is you piggyback the smaller wedge on top of the large wedge. Here is a clinical situation wherein you have a shallow class 2 cavity with gingival recession. I had placed a garrison wedge first but still you can appreciate there is a gap between the gingival seat and the matrix band. So a second wedge is placed on top of the first one and that had solved the problem. Let's discuss a similar clinical scenario wherein we have a shallow cavity with mild gingival recession. Here I had placed a garrison matrix and a bioclear diamond wedge. But under the magnification I could appreciate a gap between the matrix band and the gingival surface margin. Hence a second wedge is placed that is a wooden wedge. Here I had used a wooden wedge. You can see the video wherein I am placing the second wedge and that second wedge actually closed the gap between the band and the gingival seat. You can sometimes encounter a concavity towards the proximal surface and uh, you will not be able to achieve predictable adaptation of matrix band towards the gingival seat. Now here what uh, traditionally what was taught to us is you do something called wedge wedging. Now logically if you try to do that this wedging technique you get an open contact towards the margin ridge. So I don't recommend this technique even though it is something that has been recommended in standard textbook. So instead of that what we can do is if you find a gap between the gingival seat and the uh, matrix band uh, primarily because you have a concavity here what we can do is you can pack teflon between the matrix band and the wedge consider this example here you have a concavity you can see a very small concavity and the there is a gap between the matrix band and the gingival seat i will be packing teflon here between the wedge and the matrix band you can see it in this picture. I had packed the Teflon and pushed it towards the concavity and the Teflon actually pushed the matrix band to adapt well towards the gingival seat. So these are the various uh, applications of uh, wedges 
in various clinical scenarios. While performing all these wedging techniques that we had learned, you should keep in mind that you are not supposed to drag the dam while placing these wedges. If you drag the dam, it will expose the gum and the primary goal of rubber dam isolation will be compromised. Oops, I forgot to mention uh, another important characteristic of wooden wedge which is not possibly achieved with a three-dimensional plastic wedge and that is tooth separation. So never forget this important feature which can only be achieved with a wooden wedge. So to summarize, I would say there is no one-stop solution and that is why in my clinical practice I use many type of wedges depending upon the clinical scenarios. So if you use these wedges in, in the proper manner we all can achieve predictable results like this. You can appreciate the adaptation of the composite towards the gingival seat with no overhang and good contacts and control. If you had liked the presentation, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel Jojo Kotur. Thank you all for tuning in and I'm looking forward to see you in another session. Bye.